Ah, hello, good afternoon, welcome. This is Love Rugby League Weekly. My name's Dave Parkinson. I'm delighted that we are the two and a half men of Rugby League chat. So if I can introduce, well, if I introduce yourselves, I can't bother. Drew Derbyshire. James Messenger. I'll, 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 be the, I'll, I'll have to be the, one of the four men. I don't know who can be the <laughs> half, half of them. I think, I think James will have yeah, to be I'll half of them. I'll take one for the team. But, uh, <laughs> it's um, good to be back there, but I missed last week. I did. watched it, I was watching well, it. Well, I think we read out a couple of your comments, yeah, didn't we? Um, I enjoyed it. I wish I could have been here because it was a, totally uh, an expansionist versus ant, anti-expansionist uh, views, wasn't it, last week? Uh, I would have enjoyed being here. But I'm back now, Dave. All's good. And... and, and I don't know if anyone's seen uh, James Gordon's tweet, the editor, uh, this week. Uh, someone's nan thinks me, <laughs> thinks I'm arrogant mm. from a recent appearance I've never known you called that. First impressions are everything, aren't they? Yeah. And she, I went, no, this is Drew, it's not arrogant. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying, I went to, went to my grandparents' house and she said, Oh, that ladder you present with, he looks like he loves himself, now, so I'll let you, let you decide. Harsh, I'm, I'm led to believe <laughs> that we're on for just an hour this week. Uh, but we could end up doing a bit of a wigging and just going beyond that cap. Oh. oh. <laughs> Sorry, old man. <laughs> uh, anyway, right. Uh, do look on site because there's a chance for you to win a pair of tickets for Salford against Wigan. This takes place on the 22nd of April. And, of course, you get the chance to win the Bachelor's Ball, which I'm hoping I can get a look at one of these before too long. Because uh, I'm, I'm dying to see what it looks like. I mean, we, we introduced the golden ball the other week. We did. Much to Drew's amusement. <laughs> we don't want to set him off again. You had a good set of golden balls, didn't you, Dave? We did. We did. Uh, but if I can come to what we've got going on site at the moment. Uh, well, we've got all the usual features off the record and paper talk, the, the two big ones um, on loverubbyleague.com. We've got an interesting one, what James Gordon did uh, yesterday on social media. Uh, which clubs are leading the way on social media, which clubs are struggling uh, on social media, makes for interesting uh, reading. Spoiler alert, leads the top, uh, but you'll have to go and click on the article to find out uh, the rest of the rankings. Uh, we've got an expansionist blog going out this afternoon um, on Coventry Birds. Um, we've got six key battles to look forward to this weekend. We've got everything on there, Dave. Get over to rugbyleague.com. So you would have liked my podcast this week because we featured uh, a player from Dewsbury Celtic who's represented Jamaica. I did. I listened to it. Uh, the final Luther podcast. Plenty of interviews, Dave. Justin Albrook uh, in good form as ever as well. Uh, very good listen. But 45 mini- minutes, was it, Dave? Uh, to an hour? Uh, 43 minutes, 10. Yeah. Very good listening. Very I, I recommend. I'm, I'm, but, but that's just me being biased. Good stuff. Uh, that'll do me. I, I won't bother putting <laughs> anything else. Uh, right, I want to turn this show up on its head because we're going to start with the amateur game. Because I've got a few tweets, you see, that have been sent uh, just regarding sort of fixtures to mention and stuff. So, uh, first one I've been asked to mention, Crossfield taking on Hull Dockers this week in Division 2. Should be a corking game. Um, I, I, know, I, I know people in both camps, so... It's going to be interesting, that one. been asked to give a mention as well to Thato Heath B team up against Crossfield's A team. Uh, now, you would have heard us talking about A, B, C teams or whatever <laughs> last week. Uh, now, Thato Heath are that strong. They have three open age teams. Wow. And you've got teams like that who've got that many players and you've got Super League teams who can't even run more than one team. That's that something, a, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, but they're paying the players rather than yeah. the amateur ranks. They're... They're amateur guys paying to play, aren't they? Because they're paying like memberships and stuff. It's good to see the amateur games thriving, isn't it? Uh, up to the Cumbrian love affair that I've got going on, and I've been asked to mention the big, big derby. It's not just happening in the National Conference League, it's happening in the Cumbrian Amateur Rugby League between Wathbrow Hornets and Egremont. Cool. Apparently, this is one where they're only two and a half miles from each other, so it's one of the closest derbies that there is. A bit of bad blood between them. A bit of bad blood, yeah, yeah. They ate each other for 80 minutes and then it's all <laughs> back in the pub afterwards, so everything's sorted. Uh, been also asked to mention Oldham St. Anne's Egg hosting Latchford Albion. There's an interesting little story regarding Latchford in this one. They gave a debut last week to a 16 year old fullback, Alex Davis. He got man of the match, scored a try, kicked a goal, and he's going to be playing alongside his dad <laughs> this coming week. So, dad and lad taking on Oldham St. Anne's. I love a story like that, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I picked a couple of fixtures out as well to look out for. Division 1 sees 
in the National Conference sees Skirla against Pilkington Rex. It sees Bradford Dudley Hill uh, taking on West Bowling in Division 2. So, as well as us talking a little bit about Derby. A Bradford and uh, Heathley Derby in the Challenge Cup, we've got this Bradford Derby happening in the Amateur Leagues this week, which I, I think is dead exciting. Uh, Cameron Raiders, Joe, um, John Bateman and Elliot Whitehead have done a little bit of promotion, haven't they, on the social media channels for that game this week? Because what, I think, Bradford Dudley Hill? Yeah, I think they? because uh, Bateman, you, Bateman, Bateman used to be a Dudley Hill uh, junior, and I'm sure Whitehead used to be West Bowling junior. Good stuff, good stuff. I like it when stuff like that happens as well, and people are getting involved. Do you remember, you too can get involved as well, so let us know your comments. Not Bob or like you personally, not you two. <laughs> Well, if they, they if they're rugby league fans and they can get, then maybe they could do as a theme tune. Maybe, maybe How about so. that? I think I think our budget's not quite big enough for that. Our <laughs> oh, budget. Yeah. Well, well, what budget exactly? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Division three, couple of fixtures to mention here: Waterhead against Oldham Saint Anne, so that's an amateur Oldham derby, and Wolston Rovers against Dewsbury Celtic, who have won three of the first five games of the season. Um, I'm heading up to Hensingham this weekend. Mm. You looking forward to it? I am. I've never been there. So, yeah, yeah. I've, I've been looking. Apparently, it should be all right for setting up my little platform. <laughs> You've heard of my little pony. Yeah, yeah. Parky's got my little platform. <laughs> the spin off show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Let's move on from that. <laughs> I've already said it. It's off. gone down. <laughs> uh, League One. Big yes. week in League One. Mm. Uh, Oldham come into some semblance of form. Um, Scott Naylor over there saying that it's the best performance of the season so far up against London Scholars. I yeah. believe only had a couple of Wiganers to call upon this time. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, yeah, they did. It was a comfortable win, wasn't it, in the end for, for You're Oldham. still laughing about it this morning. <laughs> <laughs> My He's gone. Oh. This, hour, this hour long show is not going well, is it? <laughs> we're, we're only, what, seven, seven minutes into it, Sean? Are you timing it? I'm impressed. Mm. I'm, 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 was, I'm only looking at the, f- the I line. I thought he was leaving it to me. Well, to I'm waiting for the, for the questions. Dave Taylor says it. Um, he'd like it to be on YouTube so we can watch it on his big TV via the road TV stick. Uh, but it, of course, does go on YouTube uh, after we have finished. That's just in response to David. Okie dokie. Yeah, we probably need another device to put it live and there'd be more tweaking and pressing buttons and stuff. Mm. Uh, right. Good week and bad week. So this is where you can get involved as well. So I want to know who you think's had a good week, who you think's had a bad week. In League One, I'm going good week, Hunslet. Because Hunslet have beaten uh, Coventry Burrs at the weekend, 44-10. Mm. They're also top of the division, four from four. But for my bad week, I'm also going Hunslet because they've lost Dwayne Strafford, the captain, for up to 12 weeks with injury, which I think is a big, big blow for him. Yeah, it's always, it's always a test when, when one of your key men, one of your star men, is, is out for a while, it's how, how the side responds, and I think the proof will be in the pudding in the next few weeks, won't it? Mm, mm. Uh, so how do you think that it's sort of like developing at the moment? I mean, we're still early days, we're only, what, four or five games into the season, do you reckon, are, are the teams where you expected them to be? Uh, I think they are, to be honest. Um, obviously, I would, Oh, well, what we talk, are we talking about every 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 league in general? Uh, no, well, no, specifically at this point, just League One. Just League One. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah keep I, I, your I, Super I, League I, bias I, yeah. for a little while. I know you're keen to mention it. I know well, you're keen no. to mention Wigan returning to winning ways, but we'll just want to hold it there. I know, I know, but I think everyone else wants to speak about Super League. I don't know how much you do. <laughs> um, but uh, going going to, I, I expect the Wolves to start strong. We're not right. talking amateur now, we're talking uh, semi-professional. Yeah, we're yeah, yeah no insulting, amateur. Insulting, are we? We started with amateur though. Um, I expected Onslaught to start very well. They've got one of the strongest squads, haven't they? Um, but I obviously expected Newcastle to start as well as Onslaught have. Um, uh, Newcastle have started very shakily. Uh, it's it's going to be interesting to see what kind of impact Dennis Betts uh, has there because he's direct to rugby, isn't he? But it... And and uh, the press release when he when he joined the club said that he's taken over all first team duties. Yeah. Um. So is that is that not just basically a head coach? Well, I was I was at working as well. I'm sure I saw something the other day where the there was something that came out and it was their interim coach as well, yeah. interim head coach. So how's yeah. how's the interim head coach it's, working with Dennis Betts? It's a bit confusing at the minute. It's it's very strange because remember Kevin Sinfield when he was director at rugby at Leeds and uh, but Jimmy Laws were head coach. 
at Leeds, but Kevin Zivio would still be in the team. It's like, going, like what? So Distancing stuff from the coaching aspect, though. So it's yeah. Dennis Diffie. Nah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, I've not a clue. I don't, I don't know what what his job entails exactly. But. Interesting to note as well, though, that working to manage to get over the top of them this weekend. Mm. Um, 32-30. So they've still, they've still got a few issues, haven't they, to sort out. But well played to Workington as well in getting yeah. over the top of them. Yeah. Um, that's, that's a game that's going to be replayed, actually, in, as part of the Challenge Cup, which will come to that draw in a little while. Get, get the revenge. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see as well whether Dennis has had some sort of influence because yeah. we were saying on another, uh, another show, we were saying on the podcast, actually, that we weren't sure quite how much influence Dennis would have had. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wondered whether one of his team talks at half time would have uh, done the trick though, because how many halves of rugby did Witness lose, and they lost the second half of, yeah. of that game? So I don't know. Yeah, just, and uh, just look at the, the table here, David. It's, exa- it's, it's pretty much apart from Newcastle. It's exactly how I thought it'd be. All Oldham, Workington, Whitehaven, all up there uh, in that top half of the table. Coventry obviously started. Started the season pretty well, didn't they? Mm-hmm. They won the first two games. Obviously, they've they've lost the previous two as well, but they, they've had a decent start by by Coventry standards. Um, and West Wales, I know they I know they've lost five out of five, but when you look at the score lines, uh, much much uh, improvement. They won their second West half of this uh, past weekend against Whitehaven, mm-hmm. so I mean that that yeah. maybe shows that mm-hmm. they're now starting to improve. Well, it's, it's a small games for them, them, isn't it? If you think back to last year and they were getting beat. Sometimes over a hundred points. What was one of them against York? Hundred forty-four nil, hundred thirty-four nil. And you, you look at score lines like that, and then come to this season, and they're doing a lot better, a lot closer score lines, and yeah. that's obvious signs of improvement. Yeah. Okay, uh, championship, and I picked out one game over the course of the weekend. Uh, there was a couple really, which I could I could mention. So you know, Bradford beating Lee, for example, great result for them. Um, but Jewsbury. Winning at Featherstone, that was unexpected. What a great result. Well, Your mate Sammy Kibula scored a try as well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I predicted Jewsbury to, to uh, have a poor season and they're proving me wrong at the minute as a, as a Sheffield Eagles, Dave. They, they well, you say the that. They've only, they've only won two and drawn one so far of seven. Yeah. It's, it's a bit of a mixed but start, it, isn't but it? But I, I thought it'd be worse than that. Mm. I, I genuinely did. I thought... I thought apart from I thought I thought Swinton had finished bottom and I thought Dewsbury would be, be very very close to them, um, so they've started pretty well. Um, looking at the table in the championship, Widnes obviously rock bottom, but that's of course with a minus twelve point deduction which they they've got rid of completely now. Reaching that zero point yeah. is probably a watermark of their season now, isn't it? They can yeah. really push forward from that. And yeah. it's it's a shame what's happened at Witness really off the field because if you look at on the field performances, they started the season tremendously well, haven't they? They've only lost to Toronto. Um the 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 of course won in Toulouse as well, which is always a hard place to go. Um, so Kieran Pertel's doing a, a cracking job there in in tough circumstances. Uh, you mentioned there about Sheffield Eagles. I mean Sheffield have been fantastic so far this year, haven't they? Yeah, they're, they're arguably doing better than a lot of people expected. But I think that kind of just shows the the level of competition now in the championship, where you've got teams teams beating everyone, and they've strung a few wins together. They're right up there, and they 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 like to think now after that start that they can be they can be right in the mix for the end of the season for that top five but then there's probably like six or seven other teams who probably think that all the way to the likes of York maybe the likes of Halifax those kind of teams there's, there's a lot of competition now and it's, it's it's quite important I think this year that you can you can get those wins early doors get the points on the board and then it's up to the other teams behind them who are having to catch up I've got a good week bad week as well from the championship as well and we'll, we'll come to uh, what you're thinking of who's had a good week who's had a bad week in a sec uh, Andrew Dixon of uh, Toronto, three tries. There is his first hat trick in God knows how long. It might be his first in his career. Or I, think, I, think actually, it is, I think it is his first career hat trick. I, I didn't actually look yeah. and ex- examine it that much, but I still thought, well, it's not so often he gets on the scoreboard. Never mind, he gets three in a game. So uh, I thought he was tremendous against Halifax. Yeah, he's a, he's, a, he's a solid player as well, Andrew Dixon, isn't he? He's, a, he's just an, a typical hard working back rower, and um, I think he's one of Toronto's kind of underrated players in many respects because obviously you look at Toronto's team and you, you look at the flashy players uh, but he goes under the radar and he's a, he's a great player. Do you think that was something more of a flashy win against Halifax? 
it's, it's very much so what you'd expect from Toronto. We've, I don't I don't think we've seen like the finished article yet with the Wolfpack this season under uh, Brian McDermott. I think it's it's still obviously a work in progress for the Wolfpack, um, but that's as, as good a performance as, uh, as they're going to put in at, at this stage. Obviously, when the weather picks up a little bit and, and they get to throw the ball around, you'd expect them to post more points, but what's going on at Halifax? Mm. What, what's going on? You, you wouldn't expect that scoreline against them, would you? They um, they weren't that good, were they, really, were they? Well, well you they were very... Yeah, I think they were impotent coming forward. I, I, I think I think that the wing got knocked out of the cells with those those three tries. I think in in consecutive sets in the first half. You you look at uh, Toronto's performance as you said, it wasn't near the finished article, but I think that spell where they got those three tries is as close as they've had all season. So the um, I think I gave a little bit of stick last week for for maybe not being as not being as um, good on the fringes, or a little bit clunky with the ball in hand. But obviously they they proved us wrong with that game and the. They look to be improving, the halves look to be combining a lot more and they look to be a bit more fluid in attack. Well, I know that's something you've been really keen to, to, to watch out for over recent weeks, isn't it? Yeah. How, how different teams' combinations have been getting better. Well, that's the thing. You, it, it's always a case when you've got new halves and new, a lot of new players at the club, how, how quickly they'll, they'll settle in, how quickly they'll form partnerships. And I think it maybe took Toronto's halves a, a bit of time, but obviously linking up with John Wilkin as well, who's, I think... I think I saw a stat where he didn't get tackled against their Halifax at all. He always passed it on, he always shifted the ball. So he's on it's epitomising the, the ball playing forward. But I think I think the the the, uh, the halfbacks are starting to click a bit more now and I think now that's happening, that's where we're gonna get a few more of the the bigger score lines, the bigger margins. But by no means were Halifax that poor. They, they they didn't have the best game, but I think Toronto, Toronto were just very good. But they're not they're not offering much going forward, are they? Are they in fact so far this no, season? No, that that's 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 the thing yeah. the, the thing that I've seen, you know. Even the games that they've won, they could have quite easily lost them had yeah. the other team just been that little bit more creative. Well they they, they look to be lacking a little bit of a direction on the last the last plays in the set and that that's quite surprising when you think about who they've got in the house got Scott Morell and he's he's normally orchestrating those plays and we've we've not seen that much this year. The, I think they put quite a few high kicks up, a few grubber kicks in behind trying to build pressure. But against a side like Toronto, it's no good building pressure if it doesn't come to come to points. Um, Batley as well. I thought, I, I've been a little bit disappointed with Batley uh, so well, far. Well, if, if I could just pause you there, oh, because that was my bad week. All right, because Bat, Batley were 12-10 up at half-time against, uh, against Toulouse and ended up losing the game 38 points to 12. So that... That sums up basically what you were saying really, yeah. with regards um, to it being very disappointing. One, yeah, they've, they've only won one. Uh, I thought they would have started a little bit better than that because uh, they're a decent side, aren't they? Under Diskin. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't really know what's going on with with Batley so far. They're not getting the results, are they? And, and when they are getting beat, it's, it's not been by close score lines either. Mm. Um, so the, the leaking tries, the leaking points, uh, something's got to, to change in quick. Rochdale as well. I thought they'd start the season better than what they have. Um, I thought they were always going to struggle, though. I thought, I thought, I th- oh, of course, I thought it was going to be bottom half of the the table considering the budget they've got. They've pro- probably got the smallest budget uh, alongside Swinton in in the championship. Um, but I don't, I, I don't think playing Scott Moore in the halves is doing him any favors. I think, I think he needs to be a hooker. Have they think. got any halfbacks though? Because they've got about four hookers in that squad. Yeah. Well, you look at it. Yeah, it's true, true. Yeah. That, that's what they need. I think, I think it's the the backs where they're struggling a little bit. You look, look at the players they've got in on dual rate. They've had a few Warrington players in the last few weeks who have beefed up that pack. But it's so well and good getting them in that position. The likes of it's Sitarakwal has played for and Pat Moore and and they they've been adding a bit of grunt. But then if you've got no one who's going to set the players up on the last and, and finish off, then you're always going to struggle. It's a fair point. It's a fair point. What are our public saying, Drew? Uh, not much, there. We've not got many comments coming through yet. Come um, on, give us some comments. Come on. We, uh, we, David Taylor says, uh, is there a serious problem in the Championship regarding full-time versus part-time? Uh, I follow Barrow and uh, we'd get better games versus the top <laughs> League One teams. Uh, most Championship and League One teams will never get to Super League. Uh, <laughs> he's asked the question, do we need a restructure? Uh, what, as in the larger... As in, as in, more full-time t- as in the full-time teams I basically think, just getting parachuted into Super League? Yeah, I, I think, I think that, that, that's basically what he's into that. Is it, I think he's, what he's saying is he, 
it's just the part-time teams always just get, well, tend to get a thumping uh, by the, the full-time teams. Um, and it would be just more competitive if it was just all part-time and then all full-time. But then the response to that could be, if 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 they are getting thumped every week, then eventually over time their, their league position and the league that they're in would start to resolve itself. So if, the, if, if what he's saying is, is kind of alluding to the fact that maybe they're not cut out for the championship in terms of being able to compete, then maybe if they drop down a division, I'm not sure. It's it's interesting, but I don't think we'd get to the stage where you could have a full time and a part time because quite often this year and last year you've had part time teams beating beating full time people. So it's it's just it's just one of them, isn't it? I wonder whether David's got a little bit of a point here, though. No, I, I, I think... I think the, the, those full-time point. teams, you know, because I mean, there's always been this big... It's, it's something that's you know been discussed on this show, you know, many times, really, about what's the whole point of having to lose in Toronto, they're full-time, you've then had, you've thrown a witness into the situation, you know, granted, depending on how things go, might not be full-time next season, but they are at this current juncture, aren't they? So... In a way, that is still what? Well, it's three fourteenth, isn't it? You've, you've almost yeah. got a quarter of the division, which is so if, still if, if you, could, you, could, you could have two sixteen team leagues, couldn't you? It could be on to something there, Drew. Thirty matches in a season. <laughs> no need for loop fixtures. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, but then, how, how would that work in terms it, of you, if you had? Say you had a full time league and a part time league, would would there be promotion? Would they just be stuck in that league? Out? I'd like to throw that back over to David yeah. because he's he's uh, you know alluding to that sort of suggestion. So I'd like to know his thoughts actually. Because you could you could throw Toronto to lose Lee because obviously Lee wanted to be full time in Super League. Um, Bradford, you could throw them in into the Super League mix and have a fully part time uh, championship. I've got you a good week here because uh, Ben Weatherall's joined us, thanks Ben, and he says Keith Lecougar's beating North Wales after the winter, what a result, without the points deduction, we'd be playoff contenders. Mm. I mean that's 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 good in itself, isn't it? I, 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 people know that I like Keith Lecougar's, mm. you know, I, I always have done, I don't know why, it was sort of one of my, <laughs> one of your guilty pleasures, one of my guilty pleasures I suppose, <laughs> you know, so I, I'm glad that they were able to get over their issues, but yeah, that's definitely a really good point there. Um, Fred's listening from Morecambe. Oh yes, yeah. Holiday time again. What do you mean again? <laughs> He's always on holiday, Fred. Just wait till he gets old of you. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, what's he saying? Um, we'll win this be full time this time this time next month, but never mind next season. Well, they've asked for an advance, haven't they? On their uh, again, they they want all this parachute payment. <laughs> what, 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 what I don't get though is. With all respect to winners, why, why are they trying to keep Anthony Gellin if he's on the most money though at the club? Are they if trying it, to keep him? Or is, yeah. is, he yeah. gonna, is he actually going to come back? Come on, let's face it. He's, he's got, people, teams are going to be interested in Anthony Gellin. Oh, right, yeah. Um, well, he's a centre and nobody's so, got centres, have they? <laughs> so, but what, I just don't get how we win this. I, and, I, and I get they want, obviously want him at the club because he's, he's a good personality to have. He's a cracking player. Um, and he's good in the in the backroom stuff what he does and everyone loves him um, and he brings all this positivity to the club but if he's on the highest wage and he's, if he's on yeah. over £100,000 a year it's a luxury player stru- really, isn't it? struggling for money it's, it, it's, well, what, why would you bother keeping it's him? It's almost a bit naive from witnessing the fact that they're looking at possibly looking at Gellin and they're thinking right he's making us money purely from the fact that he's a media personality he's getting bums on seats he's getting tickets sold he's getting interest but then you look at the finances and I, I wouldn't say that they're in a position where they can justify spending such a big amount on him. And I would also argue as well that with all of what's happened at Witness there's a heck of a lot of goodwill still going on in the town isn't there? So yeah. there's a real groundswell of support. Now will that continue? Because ultimately oh. although they've had a great start we're probably coming into a, a group of games now where potentially you can see teams upsetting them. Yeah but if, thinking about Gellin again for a second. If 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 for example he did leave, do you think that they the still get those five thousand crowds? I think they would. He, I think they would. Yeah, he, yeah. he didn't play. He didn't play against. Who was who was it the other day? Was it Rochdale? They played against. I think and oh, seventeen hundred at Rochdale. Yeah, the biggest crowd they've seen in quite a while. Exactly. And I think Witness took nearly a, was near, took nearly a thousand. Was it? Or? I, I reckon they would have took about eleven hundred actually. So they, if they if they've taken that many and that's without Gellin playing, they've obviously 
there's a lot of goodwill to the team. It's not just yeah, it's not just, it's not just going yeah, not just going to see the him. Fans, the, um, so that's what we're saying. He's a luxury player, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, he is. He is. Um, but if, if, if Castleford are interested, I, I'd be because he, he signed a two-year deal with Witness. So if if he went now, we'd. Uh, Witness had received a transfer fee for him and he'd yeah. obviously free up the... And the Scott's joined in on the conversation. He says, let him go to Castleford. Yeah, well, yeah. Witness with, with aren't in a position, I don't think, to have a luxury player when when the finances are, are what they are at the minute and the, the, the struggling, they've been struggling just to pay pay players, play staff in recent months and I don't, I don't think they're, they're in a position where they can afford to have someone on such high money. I tell you what, if he does end up at Castleford, well played Cass, because I mean, they've made the most of a couple of bad situations in rugby league yeah. over the last six or eight months to get a player of the stripe of Gellin in the team potentially ally that with a Peter Matout here who's been brilliant and was probably one of the his quality though isn't it one Peter of the few Matoute. players that can hold his head up high after last week when they played against St Helens which we'll come to in a couple of minutes mm. um, yeah, yeah I, I just think <laughs> well played to them they've made the most of the situation haven't they what else are people saying uh, Michelle says they couldn't cope at Rochdale with the amount of fans that went wow well I know they opened yeah. that stand behind the post yeah, and they've they, not had that opening ages either they, yeah it's, um, it was a fantastic following from Witness I, had it. I really didn't expect them to take over a thousand um, David says not impressed by Gellin or Hansen at the Barrow game fair yeah that was it's quite a close game that wasn't it which they had against Barrow who were really with this only sort of got over the top in the yeah, last 25 well, minutes or so. from a conversation with a couple of witness fans Gellin's been a bit on and off yeah he's been a bit hot and cold this season so far I watched him when witness played Toronto and he struggled against Toronto Ricky Latelli really had him on on the ropes um, and who did, they, who did they recently play uh, at Barrow, yeah, yeah, yeah. A witness fan told me at Barrow that he didn't have the best game, and it was it. To be fair, when they played against Bradford the other week, he should have been Simbin. There was a couple of really stupid incidents that he yeah. did, where if he was Super League, he'd be straight in the bin. Well, it's, it's it's come to the scenario now where Gellin's arguably producing more on social media than, than he is on the pitch for, for the team, and that's. Ooh. But I don't know. It's. I it's, like it. You can <laughs> stay. You, you like you're that coming up, You're coming up with the big. Yeah. Controversial sayings. We're gonna put. The term <laughs> hey, Darren said, "Who's that arrogant guy on the left?" <laughs> there he is. He so <laughs> agrees. Our old friend Darren Lilly uh, from Lee. Uh, <laughs> That'll be a hashtag throughout campaign. Can, can, we, can, can we edit edit like a little uh, intro tag? Mr. Arrogant, and then Mr. just Mr. Messenger, Mr. Parkinson, but Mr. Arrogant. Oh, we'll get we'll get something stuck arrogant. on the wall behind. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. Yeah. You know our budget for post production has gone completely out of the window now. Yeah, just, in fact, hang on, I'm sure I've got some note paper here. Yeah, get post it, post it now. Mister Arrogant, we'll sort it. Arrogant, we'll sort it. No. Um, but that's all. That's all comment wise for now, Dave. Uh, hang on, so you missed but... one from David. David came back. Also, oh, also, oh, oh, sorry, sorry David. Leagues. He said uh, only one team can go up this year. If it's not Toulouse or Toronto, for instance, will they stay? Will the team that stays down survive? Well, the backers still back them. That's another conversation. It's, it's, well, it's, it? it's just a man. It's, t- it's time will tell. That's the only answer, isn't it? But he agrees with that two times sixteen division. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I think it's a no-brainer to be honest. But it's yeah. not what, 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 but, what but, Yeah, what do we know? Well, then, but then wouldn't um, it have to be more than sixteen teams, wouldn't it, for the second league? Unless so, unless some went to drop down to amateur. Then what what could, teams want to do? To that? be honest, I mean, like when it was when it was Northern Four Premiership at the start of the two thousands, there was something like 18, 19 teams in the division. Then that's getting worked. To, but then that's getting well, to the stage where you've got yeah. that's getting to the stage where you've got what, 36, 37 fixtures. Well, well, no, they ended up with some convoluted fixture. You rugby league's great at coming up with convoluted fixture, literally, aren't they? So uh, they played something like twenty eight games or thirty games over the season. So you played everybody at least once, and then certain other teams twice. Oh gosh, yeah, I prefer, I prefer rugby league not to have any more restructuring. But I think, it after where you, I think it depends where you finish. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan of that though, Dave. I think you've got to play a team all the way. So, so yeah. you'd kick, you know, two or three teams into the amateur league? We've, we've done that before. What's your name? Maurice Lindsay? We've <laughs> done that before. A press Prescott Panthers, no. mysteries we don't no, have them playing. Nottingham? I don't, I don't know. I, I've been, I don't know. I've been, I've been, I've been, I'd, I'd just keep him in and have a long season. Mm. It would be a very long season. That midweek game, just well. 
Tuesday, Sunday, Tuesday, Sunday. Don't care. <laughs> Know, More coming week games, it will take a genius to have, have to come up with a fixture list. Uh, uh, Fred's put a comment here Ottawa Stags next year, how right about that? <laughs> um, what were thoughts on it? Do you want your thoughts on it? By all means, shoot away because you know, if, we, we were if, the anti, anti expansion show last week. Uh, so now we've got if, the expansion he's back on board. The, have your say, um, I think if they've got the right application, uh, I don't see a problem with it. But as long as you've got the right application, I'm not just saying, yeah, let's bring everyone in, let's They've bring everyone in. They've got to the, the, yeah. the Hemel Stags, though, haven't they? Yeah. That so, was, what that, application have they got to do that, then? Because they've already got someone that was. Well, if they've got the resource them. and they've got a correct ground in it and. 24,000 capacity. The marks in the <laughs> Better than Castleford, better than Wakefield. There's only two grounds bigger in Super League and they're football grounds as well. Yeah. Um, uh, if, if, if they've got the resource, so if, if they've got the, the financial backing, which we we understand they have, um, if they've got, if they've delayed their intentions of the marketing promotion, if they're confident they can get such and such a crowd through the gates, um, I don't see a problem with it. If, if they can go the way Toronto are going at the minute, because let's face it, even even though you might not like people might not like Toronto, oh, even though they might not like Toronto, they they're doing stuff well at the minute, and they and when they do play it up, when they're they burning, do play it up, they're burning money though, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Burning yeah. someone yeah. else's money, so you can always do stuff when you're burning someone else's money. Yeah. Well, you, yeah. you get that in all sports, really. A lot of teams, um, in football as well, in the lower leagues, they they'll burn money, they'll operate on losses to to get to get to the top flight. In that case, the Premier League, and that's the thing what Toronto are doing now. They they're spending big, they're hedging the bets, and it'll it'll work if if they get promoted this year. I think. I can't see the investors backing out if a team like Toronto don't go up this year. I think they're in it for the long haul and it's going to be a slow burn. But I think, I think a team like Toronto, if they've got the finances that they have in place, then the, it's it's going to happen that they probably will head for the bets and operate on a loss. I still think it's just such a shame though that we're in this situation where we're looking outward and we're looking to other countries and we've got so many of our clubs that are struggling themselves. You're right, but if. It, <laughs> It's a difficult one because clubs are, are struggling because they're not they're not really doing anything, are they? Promotional marketing yeah. wise. They, Is this where we should be consulting this uh, this article that's appeared on Love Rugby League regarding where everybody's gone in the possibly, social yeah. media um, league tables? Because there is some clubs that are starting now. No, there are. Right, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. right don't, don't, yeah. don't get me wrong. Like, uh, Workington Town, for example, are doing a, a good job and they're, and they're giving it a go. When, when I don't I don't know how they're getting these famous people to uh, <laughs> make little videos and stuff. Like that. I know they they had boxing promoter Eddie Hearn on one uh, last year. Yeah. Um, so they they're bit, they, they get like little nice little clever things put out there on on digital media, but then you get clubs who who very very rarely even tweet, which in this day and age you. <laughs> It's it's baffling that some would say happen. though that and you're, you're not attracting um, younger audiences. Some would say though that with social media as well, you're preaching to the converted because if you're you'll actively go looking for things that interest you, won't you? Mm. On that, so you, are you really reaching out to a new audience? I think you are because that when you've got everyone's got followers, so when even a follower retweets something, it pops up on your timeline. Thanks to so, my three and a half thousand followers, by the way. <laughs> I just I was just raising the question hypothetically. Um, so so there's always ways around it, and you can get sponsored ads and stuff like that on there, and when people retweet, and it, even when you like a tweet now, it it comes up um, on your timeline. If it, if if say you've liked something of Lee Centurions, it'll come up on my timeline. Um, so well, I didn't know that. I'll have to like more stuff in the appears on your timeline. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we, we've got plenty of comments still coming in as well. Yeah. Fred, Fred also adds that um, Stag say that we're recruiting develop uh, in America. Uh, brilliant. No big salaries on it. So it yeah, sounds so like they're going to do yeah. the London Scholars version um, of, a, of a Canadian. What, what I liked at the 2017 World Cup, um, Brian McDermott was the USA coach, wasn't it? And he, predict, uh, he picked uh, an Ameri- a real American uh, born and bred side. Um, it, it had a couple of heritage players in, but it was predominantly uh, American and playing in the American League, like the Atlanta Rhinos, uh, etc. So uh, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how it is. Um, 
<laughs> Hopefully, uh, October. I've just when, seen. Uh, I've just seen David's comment because he's still saying. Have, have you managed players. to get hold of uh, Eric Perez? And oh, it's still not happened. It's not happened. I think it'll be a slow. It'll be. It'll be a slow burn. It's, that, it's, it? it looks like it's going. We've got quite a few comments coming in, so we'll we'll fire through. Yeah. Uh, Darren also says, "Does the panel think that the summer bash is a waste of time if it's not televised live?" Uh, as it was supposed to be a vehicle to bring the championship to a wider, if not televised, is it a relevant event? Yes, I'd get rid of it because it's an extra game in the calendar we don't need. Yeah. Uh, it skews or could have the potential to skew the league. It's like, yeah. I can put, I can for example, put, with this playing yeah. league three yeah. times this season. I completely agree with you. It's like Magic Weekend, the both, both concepts should just be canned. Well, no, I, I, I disagree in the fact that the Magic Weekend, I, I agree with you, the fact that the Summer Bash should be should be scrapped. It, it, because that, that, no, it's that, that, that weekend, weekend. I, think, I think the Summer Bash, the, the thing with that is that it's in place to, to showcase a championship. And I think if that's not on TV, then what's it really doing? Because you're not getting people tuning in, find out what the championship's all about. I think the difference between that and the Super League Magic Weekend is they, get, they, they have a an audience for the Magic Weekend, I think. And the fact that it's all on TV, the fact that you get thousands of fans going, it's a, it's a weekend that fans look forward to in the calendar. Fans fans pick that out at the start of the season and you, you see wherever it's held, you'll always get about 60,000, 70,000 over the course of a weekend. And I think I think it's it's a real staple in the rugby league calendar, whereas you can't say the same for the Summer Bash when you've got 2,000 fans going to Blackpool or wherever it's held. It's not got the same yeah, but, appeal. Yeah, but it's, it's, that, that's just the size of the clubs. I, I think both... Both concepts are just glorified piss ups, in effect. Yeah. Um, Beep! And, 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 and that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. So you get that editing in after Do you know what I mean? I, 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 like, I, everyone, yeah. everyone, loves, everyone loves a booze up. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Myself included. Yeah. Um, but, but that's what it is, in effect. And what, we've been accused of having a drink on all the podcasts, and we, we haven't. Have we? Haven't we? Do you remember that one a few weeks ago? You came around and do it. <laughs> Someone put on. Oh yeah, 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 of course, of course. <laughs> get, get the beers in for next week. Uh, but right. I, think, I, think, I think that's what it is at the end of the day. Yeah. I, 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 I mean, I've got to be honest. Like, for, for example, I, I know we're talking to people, just Magic Weekend at Newcastle. How, how many Jordies were in that stadium over the weekend? Have they actually, have, have we ever had figures saying how many was there? No, no, I don't think it's broken now, but... I think the difference between the Magic Weekend and the... I, I, I personally keep them both if the Championship Summer Bash is on TV because that's a showcasing all the teams over the course of the weekend, like the Magic Weekend does. Fans, A lot of fans you'll find at the Rugby League, if they're passionate about the game, they'll, they'll go and they'll watch every, more or less every game. Where, whereas in the in the Championship, if it's not on TV, people won't know about it. and it just, I think it reduces the credibility of the competition. I'll be honest, I think it was just introduced because Super League had their weekend and they thought, you know what, we'll have a weekend in the sun, work a week, <laughs> oh no, well, we're, you know, it's pointless us going to up, to up to Newcastle or down to Cardiff or anywhere like that. I know where Northerners want to go, yeah. they want to go to Blackpool! <laughs> yeah. I do like going to Blackpool though. Just but have a ride on the donkeys, that's what the weekend's yeah. about. <laughs> I'm a bit too big for them. Is it like sticks and rock, Joey? <laughs> do you go looking for ones where you can put your own message in? I'm only asking because I do that. <laughs> Sugar dummies, me, there. Sugar dummies, all right. Okay. Shut me yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We sound like a healthy, healthy bunch <laughs> on this battle. Uh, ben that says, in the long term, it'll have to be um, a North American Pro League if it, if it continues to... Get more entries, teams. See, I, I, I agree with that. Yeah, like, I, 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 probably, I probably agree, but but obviously you'd have to gain momentum. It can't just be obviously three teams. The thing is, though, they could set up amateur leagues around, couldn't they? No, there's a there's a full amateur league in the states. Yes. But are they actually interacting with the Toronto Wolfpack? Or no. Are Toronto just going on in their own merry way? You know, well, I I think further down the line, I think five ten years. I think if if you have an Ottawa, you have a you have a New York, you have a Toronto, and they're all big powerhouse teams across there. I think if there's maybe Toronto would be the exception, but maybe you could see a New York or an Ottawa going over and joining and North American League. You couldn't see Toronto doing that. I don't, I don't know when, when when the money's in, the, the money's actually in the English game in terms of if they got to Super League. I you think. see, at risk of mentioning Rugby Union again, I'm sorry, you know, but um, we've got Major League Rugby, which seems to be going places. They've got TV deals in place. They've got couple of clubs coming in next year there's even a Toronto club that's in that division as well uh, you know so they seem to be beating us 
get into that stage as well. We but then, fall behind the eight ball. But then I don't think we can. We should compare ourselves to them. It's a completely different sport. Yeah, I think they're yeah. they're they're a lot further ahead. I think it'll take us a lot more time to get there. But I think I've, I've seen a lot on social media this week about uh, people putting putting out that all oh, our crowds are averaging what, five six thousand when you've got when you've got crowds in rugby union compare um, getting twenty thousand or something. It's, it's it's a different sport. It's like it's like someone saying. Oh yeah, well, football football stadiums get crowds of forty thousand. It's a different sport. We see it as a different sport, but does a country like America, does a country like Canada see it as a different sport? I think they'll see it as a different sport as as more Canadian rugby t- league teams start to develop and they start to have more of a profile. I think as at the moment there's probably not that many household rugby league teams, Toronto being the exception, over in North America. But I think even Ottawa or a New York grew. And they were more publicised, and you got some household names playing for those kind of teams. That's when I think that, that the attitude would maybe start to shift, and you'd you'd have a lot more fans looking at it and seeing them as separate entities. Okay. We need we need to keep seeming through some comments. Yeah, yeah, keep, in here, keep, no. keep, um, keep going. In fact, we'll, we'll just leave this section to Drew to read out with the, the comments. Uh, then in our uh, going, going back to the summer bash, uh, Fred said that Sky is showing the usual uh, arrogance with the championship. The RFL should offer it to clubs. Uh, to organise their own TV deal, uh, TV deal. Well, I mean, some of them they'd have, uh, they'd have like their own online channels. Well, you could, you could stream it. Yeah. Oh, could, could you stream it? Or even go, think even bigger and outside the box, and maybe take it all to YouTube or something like that. I or, think if they took it to YouTube, it'd grow because yeah. there's a lot of there'd be a lot of fans who'd go there and watch it that way. Because it pops up on recommended feeds as well. Exactly, so yeah, that's the thing. You'll get people who, who follow any kind of rugby, even if it's in Australia or wherever. Mm-hmm. Um, the, obviously, it'll pop up on their YouTube feeds. Uh, or even bigger, get it on Netflix. <laughs> Netflix and chill. I have no Netflix. Can they not get it on that one Amazon Prime instead? That, well, that, see, I've got that one. And it, see, this, we need to be thinking bigger here. I, I, don't, yeah. think, I don't think many people want to be Netflix and chill into Swinton versus Rochdale at Blackpool. We'll be you never fair. know. No, no, but you, you might watch it, though. You've got your people around the world. But it's, it's quite interesting how... Around the world, how much rugby league is, I thought, it, is it viewed? Because because I was talking to someone in Australia a few days ago, I work with, and he was at, he was telling me this is to, for Super League. He was saying that he didn't even have a clue that that Golden Point was in Super League. Now that no one no one over there knows, <laughs> and he said because I, I I mentioned it to him, and he said, "Oh really? Is is Golden Point over there?" I think that just shows the level of the level of exposure that our English games have been over there. But Listen, the, the, the Aussies don't think we resonate on the planet, do they? They don't yeah. even know who Toy Makinson is. You know? yeah. and so, I, the, so like, this is why you never yeah. hear me talk about the NRL, because I don't care. The, the, you ooh. might say it's the biggest league on earth. You might say, but I honestly don't care. Those players have gone. I don't care until they put on England shirt, of course. It's like uh, everyone, everyone was surprised when... Um, John Bateman, like, was player of the round or whatever, he, he, he got in round one of the NRL. Yeah. Why well, should that surprise him? Right, exactly. He's been brilliant exactly. for three years at Wigan, hasn't he? Exactly. And, and, and is it, how many appearances has he got for England now as well? Yeah. <laughs> he, must, he must have all, over 15 games played for England. Uh, um, right, let's whisk through these comments as yeah, well. So, sorry, uh, we're having a lot of replies to people as well. I'm liking um, it. This, this discussion is super. Is it one? Oh, it's Louis Banks again. Is it Lewis or Louis? It's that name again. Let's go, Louis. 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 Uh, come in more professional teams that is like you're thinking so what had, what had happened then with those professional teams that are in Super League would you then jettison I, th- I think to, it, to I, North I think it'd be it'd be down to the teams themselves I think I, I could see a Toronto or an Ottawa maybe wanting to to stay in the English game but then if you, if you had a New York who maybe were doing as well as they hoped then I think they could they'd arguably want to go over to Canada see, maybe if the Aussies could be asked with doing some development work then we might see a World League Oh gosh! Do, well, we can't even organise an England Australia test match. <laughs> uh, D- David says if Toulouse or Toronto get promoted to into Super League, it will present a logistical nightmare. Particularly Toronto, I'm betting the Super League clubs will block them. No, 
I can't, I can't see them mocking them. Uh, you know what? Mm -hmm. I can see some of the more xenophobic German who maybe like the number of people coming through the gates, um, at least turning turning the nose up at them. Well, then initially, I, I I don't think that's an issue. I think if they want to be like that, they can. I don't I don't understand all this criticism of Toronto. The, the, the fact of the matter that this applies to Super League Championship. Toronto in the second division get higher crowds than most Super League teams. When they're at, when they're on home soil, they'll get seven, eight thousands, and I, I don't understand why there's such a negativity. Obviously, they've, they've spent big, but they're, they're trying to progress the organic way. They're trying to progress through the that, leagues. Nothing. See, I don't think that's an organic way though. Well, they're they, buying it. They're, they're not, they? not organic. Is what Ottawa well, are not, talking. Not about. organic in the sense of the sense of producing their own players at the minute, but I think organic in the sense of wanting to go about climbing the leagues in the right way. They want to start in League One. Climb to championship, climb to Super League. I think in that sense they're being organic. Okay. Uh, Dave also says Drew likes Douglas. He supports <laughs> supports Wigan. So I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Dave, that's a really good one. <laughs> I like it. I'm an arrogant donkey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, change the post-it note quick. Hey, at least, at least nobody's saying that I've got an anger issue this week. No. That's good. Uh, that was stressful. <laughs> <they're ready. laughs> Michelle also says. Um, didn't Sky stop a team from streaming their games? Yeah, it was Bradford, wasn't it? it yeah, was Bradford Bra last season. Bradford, Bradford um, Strictly speaking, to... that, I don't think that was Sky. I think that well, was the rugby league, wasn't yeah, it? Because they've got other, was other ideas, yes. Um, because that was streamed on proper sport, wasn't it, when it was in League One? One thing I do Bradford know game. is that a few years ago, there was Channel M in Manchester, which covered the championships really well from a local point of view. So it gave a lot of extra publicity to the likes of Oldham, Rochdale, uh, you know, Lee. Yeah. And then suddenly Sky took an interest in the championship and we had Thursday night matches mm. and they weren't allowed then to, to show anything. Well, one thing that I'd like to see in terms of growing, growing the game, I think you look at an app like our league who have games more or less every week mm -hmm. and I, I think... If something like our league could transfer onto YouTube, where the games are shown both live on the app and live on YouTube, then you you increasing increasing your exposure, getting more fans wanting wanting to watch, and that that could be a good way of getting fans yeah, who maybe haven't seen the sport before. So yeah, you can maybe get them to have a look at other other ways of developing. They, they have to really. Yeah, Mark Henry says that the other league are doing a very good job. Oh yeah, they're um, good. They're good. Showing the games in the lower leagues. I I completely agree. It's you seem to have almost up. forgotten about League One this time though, because they've been showing all Championship, haven't they? So yeah, yeah. So I just wonder whether but then, they're then a little bit further. But then that, that that's it. understandable. I think when you've got such a competitive Championship this year, that's what I think a lot of people want to see. They want to see the, these teams going up against each other, and there's, there's been quite a lot of close games. Yeah, they take an interest, don't they? In oh the, yeah, yeah, the yeah, high yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That's. That happens in all sport. That's what look at the Premier League compared to the Championship on Sky. Why do you think um, I always start with amateurs and League <laughs> One? Because you're all dying at this point. I try, I try, I try get Dave nibble before, but he didn't nibble. He didn't nibble before. We have a little bite there. I thought, I thought I'd, get, I thought I'd th throw me <laughs> Robin and try and catch him. Pardon? <laughs> I'm off. not. I'm not quite sure where it, where Drew's up to with his rod. But, uh, yeah, let's move on. <laughs> and is off. We've had what? We've had donkeys, rods, and ponies. Uh, that's the title for Love Rugby League Weekly this week. That's going. That'll be the title don on don YouTube. Donkeys, rods, and ponies. I like yeah. it. Yeah. And arrogance. Yeah. And, and yeah. Arrogance, rods, and donkeys, <laughs> and ponies. Anyway, let's get on with hey, Louis hey. slash Louis. <laughs> I can't, I can't remember what... Can we just ask him, how do you stop, say your name? Stop it, just, what's he Mi said, what's Mi he said, what's he said? <laughs> Mr Banks says, if Toulouse come up, uh, you would hope Super League make the fixtures work for the clubs. For example, if you play Catalans away this week, you play Toulouse away the week after, so the two teams go over for basically a week or ten days to save travel costs. But then would they not be... But then, but then it's, it's, only, it's only France, isn't it? You've got accommodation costs then, though, haven't you? Yeah, exactly. So and, is that and, not and, and, more? and they probably want to see the families, wouldn't exactly. they? How, yeah. far, <laughs> how far a distance is it between between Perpignan and Toulouse? I'm not too sure, but I'd imagine it's quite a way. And you're, you're, about, you're, about about two hours away. <laughs> you're about two hours away. Walk or buzz or... So, I, you know, it's, it's basically taxi. from... It's basically yeah. from... Train. Big taxi. <laughs> it's basically from <laughs> our Love Rugby League HQ here to Hull. 
I, I think Put it that way, I'd sooner make that journey than the one that I just mentioned. <laughs> like, I, I think, Sorry, people from all. I, th I think it'd cost more. It's a, it's a group trip to all. No, well, it, it'd yeah. cost more, I think, for a team to do both games in yes. in the space of 10 days. As you said, the accommodation cost, I think that's a big thing. Yeah. Whereas, whereas a lot of teams now, you see them fly in, fly out on the same day. I can understand it, you know, so I, I, don't, think it's, I don't think it's a completely bad idea, but I just think it'd cost that little bit more. Yeah. David says you wouldn't want to be a Lancashire slash Yorkshire based side and have success in games in London, France and Canada no. and back home. It's an expensive job for a spectator that, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Possibly, but then you get that in a lot of leagues, I think. I know we, we say we don't want to compare ourselves to Union, but you look at some of the competitions they've got, I think they're... they're pretty <laughs> no, you can't no, go no, 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 yeah, no, 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 no. Union, are you, James? No, this, is, this, this is an example of a league where they've got, they've got teams in Wales, but then they've got teams in, I think it's South Africa, all in the same league. It's, and Which is where my World League idea comes from. See, we'll be sorted if we can get a couple of New Zealand teams, a couple of Australian teams. Get the Paramount over I'll, I'll, in I'll, Super I'll, I'll bring in a team in Perth as well in Australia. So, uh, yeah, we we'll could, snatch, snatch them off the NRL. <laughs> we could do Perth in Scotland, they could do a twinning arena. Hey, hey, it'd be alright being a one of media teams in that league, wouldn't it? Going <laughs> on, 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 on your, your jollies every two weeks. Your passport to be getting started, yeah. wouldn't it? You'd be a big one to show off. Yeah. Get, uh, get, 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 get one in Asia or something as well. Get a team in Asia. Any more points from any of our lovely fans? Uh, no, a lot, of, a lot of replies to each other. Um, Agreeing like. and maybe disagreeing on some points, but I think we like have, we've covered the bases so far, now. Good, right? Super League then, right? Hey, have, have your say. Have your say. I have my say on Super League. Yeah. Uh, St. <laughs> Helens have been absolutely fantastic, haven't they? Uh, so far this season, and not a lot of people were shocked to see them beat Castleford last week, but. A lot of people were stunned by the scoreline and the margin of defeat that Castleford suffered. Was it 42 42 12? 12. 12. I mean, that's a batter, isn't it? Really? Uh, yeah, a hammer it at Castleford as well. Eight tries. Um, yeah. a, a real solid performance from Saints. It, it's, it's hard to see who can stop them this year. They don't really look like they've got any weaknesses, really, no. do they? They don't. You, you, you look along along their team and you've got, you've got players who have been keeping up. Kept out of the team, you've got Danny Richardson who's not even getting a look in in the house because you've got Johnny Lomax playing so well, you've got Theo Farge playing so well. And I think I, I think their best player this year has been Lachlan Coote. He's maybe not got all the headlines, but you look at the, the sweeping up he does at the back, I think he's got seven assists already, which is really good for a uh, for a fullback. And I think when, whenever there's a sniff of danger on the St. Helens lines, he's always the man who sweeps it up. And I think I think he's the un unsung hero, that St. Helens too. Yeah, I completely agree, and that and that kicking game as well. Um, he offers that left footy kicking game, and mm. uh, if if Theo Farge and Johnny Lomax push out to the right side to get a move on, uh, Lachlan Coote can just drop back, and and he's got plenty of time to to get a kick away. Yeah, he's fantastic. But James Roby as well, mm. what a just what a player. He is phenomenal. Yeah, isn't and, 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 and like a fine wine. And a player who goes who goes under the radar in that Saints team, Morgan Knowles. He worked his, his socks off. He's an unreal player. Well, he, he made he made our team of the week this week, and I, th I don't think it's the first time he's got in there. He's, he's, he's been he's been real good. I think I think it's a con I think I put it's it's the consistency with him that's that's most impressive, and I think I think that that that's what you need in any any young player. So tell us, James, how is this team of the week on Love Rugby League constituted? Do you sit there pouring through all the stats off the opposite we website? Yeah, we, uh, we have a we have a sit down every week. We look through. Look you through. discuss it. Is this, we does, do. Yeah. How much of a set does Drew get? Does Drew get the overruling say? No, we we. No, we we're we're this why George been. Williams keeps appearing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we work we work well as a team. I think picking picking that team sometimes yeah. a bit of, a bit yeah. of disagreement, but but that's sometimes due to the fact that there's maybe three or four good players in each position. But yeah, the the stats. The stats are always a good indicator, but sometimes the stats don't tell the whole story, especially if you've seen the game, because um, we might come on to it later, you look at Leeds and some of the stats that have been thrown around about Trent Merrin, I think. Well, chuck him in now, because I mean, you know, I, 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 this is the usual point where we laugh at Leeds Rhinos, because they're bottom of the table, and they spent all this money, and they're doing naff all. They yeah, are in crisis. Well, you, you've, you've, got, you've got the likes of Comrade Horrell, who I think has made the, the most metres and the most tackle bush. You've got <laughs> Trent Merrin, who's one of the top in the league for offloads and metres, but then... You, you look at the overall performance and they're not doing well. I don't think I don't think a couple of good stats can 
can really take away from the fact that on the whole, Conrad Hall's maybe not lived up to what we thought it'd be. He's given far too many penalties away. Trent Merry and all this talk of homesickness. I think, I, I, I don't know. I think I think neither of them have lived up to the billing so far, and that that's what's the most frustrating thing. Do you reckon though, James, that because they've been highlighted and everybody's highlighted them as the marquee players, so maybe maybe we shouldn't know who the marquee signings are because that's put loads and loads of pressure on them. Well, and at the moment they seem to be coping in one respect, but not. For a team well, you, you get that with, with a lot of players, I think, you, even if they're not marking. So, so take, for example, Wigan and George Williams. There's been there's been a lot of talk on this show and in general about, about how he's, he's not lived up and uh, rightly so, the fact that he's not been he's not been producing what he was doing last season. But I'm glad you've been listening to me, James. I, I always listen, Dave. <laughs> but yeah, George, George Williams, he's had, a, he's had a fair bit of flack and then he goes and scores a hat-trick, was it? And I don't know, I think... I think you, we need the likes of Hurrell and the likes of Merrin to, to have a game like that where they get the assist to get the try. And I think at the minute, I think I I go as far as saying that someone like Trent Merrin for the money is on. I think he's been a waste of money for, okay. for Leeds. When yeah. you think about some of the the players who they've got coming through and some of the other players who they could have bought, I think it's it's ridiculous how they spent they spent so much on him when they could get someone for half the price who do a far better job. Um, yeah, I've I've kicked a man when he's down, Drew. <laughs> is there uh, George Williams uh, yeah. I have rightfully criticised him at certain points it would be fully <laughs> right of me to praise him because he goes and scores a hat trick has a fantastic game by all accounts over at Salford that's an important win for Wigan then isn't it they just have to win one yeah that, that were it Dave they just had to get the monkey off the bat it were, it were the best performance um, Salford could have easily won won the game you wouldn't have been surprised if, if so. I think Sofa will be quite disappointed that they lost the game. I think Wigan just overall deserved it, uh, but there wasn't much in it at all between the two sides. Uh, Wigan's left edge were unbelievable. Uh, th- that's what got, got Wigan uh, all the tries. It, you had Williams dictating play, uh, showing good support play as well, and then obviously um, Oliver Gildart in the centre, and then Joe Burgess playing his first game in 11 months. It was all all on that left side, and they absolutely just peppered. So Sol- Burgess was on the wing, was it? Yeah. yeah. They tried. They tried to turn him into a centre at yeah. certain points, haven't they? I yeah. think it's, it's an out and out wing, I think right, okay. I, that that's what I go for. But one one thing that I did want to ask you about that game, obviously you were there. We, we talked a bit about Wigan's halfback combinations. How how did Williams and Samet? Was it Samet who played with that? How were they with it? They... Was, yeah, it was probably it was probably Samet's best game for Wigan yet, but it wasn't. Overwhelming. I think it's still still a work in progress. Yeah, v- very much so a work in progress for for Sam. I d- with Wigan, I don't, you, George Williams has got to start in the arms for me, um, but it's who starts alongside him because, that, in my opinion, Tommy Lulawa is a hooker. Yeah. And Agreed. Sam Powell's a hooker. Yeah. So it is that leads to win the halves. It's, it only leaves Sam up, and then obviously Jake you've Shorrocks. got Sh- Jake Shorrocks. Yeah. It's like who, a Scott Moore coming. problem at Rochdale, um, isn't it? If you look at it like How many hookers can you fit into yeah. the season after this? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a tough one at Wigan regarding the, the, the halves because Samet's not done an awful lot so far to, to prove he, he, he's, to prove he's having a starting spot but then, he's, he's not done an awful lot I, I, personally I, I really rate Samet I think it's, it's all coming from London I think it's always going to take a bit of time to, to get used to a new surrounding especially when you're going from arguably I know we say a, a lower status team the higher than them in the league but you come from somewhere like London and you've got Got a big, a big expectancy when you go to a team like Wigan. I think maybe a bit starstruck at first, but then I think, I think as the games go on, I think him and Williams will forge a good. I think what you mentioned there. I mean, with Samet, I mean he's been out at the top level for five years, hasn't he? Yeah. So you know that he's still probably getting back up to, to that level. If you well, like, it's, what you were saying. It's, it's inevitable that it's going to take him a little bit of time, and I think, but I think when when he has got acclimatised again to the top flight, that's when we're gonna. We're going to see him, see him improve, and I think he'll, he'll flourish in the halves, I reckon, with Williams. Right, good week, bad week, from my point of view in Super League. Good week, Fuad Yaha, four tries for Catalans. I thought, again, brilliant. It's great to see him back from uh, rugby union. I, I rate him massively. Um, I, I, I remember when he first came onto the scene, it was quite a few years ago now. Um, uh, I remember thinking, oh, I... I when I was a, when I was just a fan, not a journalist, I, I, I thought I'd take him at Wigan. He's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's quite raw, but he's he's fiery and he, he's got a lot of pace on the wing. And I, I'm a I bit, like angry wingers. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he's a, he, he's quite fiery, um, but 
He's only still like 22, 23, 22, something, yeah. something like that. But then it's, it's interesting with him as well, the fact that he seems to have it all, doesn't he? He's, yeah. got, he's got the strength, he's got the pace. I think my, my friend will probably know Yaha is my favourite winger in the whole of Super League just because of the fact that he's, he's so young but he seems so close to the finished package. The fact that he's got, he's got strength, he's deceptively quick as well. And one, one thing that Catalan will utilise, I think, this year is the link up between him and Braden Willie Army down that left edge. Mm-hmm. I think Willie Army got two assists, I might be wrong. It I'm might a big have, follow Willie Army. Yeah, but I think that the more those two play together, I think they could be devastating. They could be one of the best centre win partnerships in the competition this year. Yeah. Bad week, I'm going all Kingston over. So I mean, cool. 42 8 getting battered over at Huddersfield. What the heck's going on there? Well, I've seen a lot of uh, a lot of talk and a lot a lot of stats, and I think the the thing that's quite alarming from what I've seen is the sheer number of missed tackles they're making. Yeah. And it's 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 not just. It's so is it one on ones then? Are yeah, just not making it's, those it's just one on one tackles. Yeah, that that that's the issue. The amount of I think it was one game a couple of weeks ago where they made forty two missed tackles in one game, and right. you, you look at stats like that, and it, it's it's not just a one off. It's it's week after week after week. It's it seems to always be an issue with the missed tackles, and for for a coach like. Tim Machine, do you think that defensively they they'd be sound and the, the, the normally they're doing quite well in attack? But I who think are who are the main culprits then? Huh? Is it or is it just like a spread? It's, of it's, I think it's just a spread of everyone. Not obviously, I think because I mean, I'm just thinking. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, I've seen a lot of Josh Drinkwater of his spell at Lee, yeah. and he was a spot player when Lee were in Super League. Yeah. So what they try and do, they get him to miss four or five tackles every single game. So if he's still coming up with four or five tackle misses every single like, game. He's not learning. I, th- is it? I, th- I think it's looking a bit more like the uh, the forward pass. Is it? Yeah, so that's, that's, through the that's what I seem to notice, and I think that's what's killing them. That they're not going to win games unless the forward packs are able to dominate. And with the likes of um, who's they got? They've got Lawler. They've got they've got big player Mitch Garber, who's been very good this year. They've got is it Mossy Masoy as well. Yeah. They've got they've got a lot a lot of big players, and as as those big players start to tire, I think that's where the missed tackles are coming in, and that that that's some of the. Hull KR are going to have to address, otherwise they could, but they could find themselves very quickly embroiled down at the bottom end. I, I covered the uh, Hull KR Castellan game a couple of weeks ago, and uh, Castellan has just won it in the end. Uh, Tierney, Lewis Tierney scored with the, with about four minutes remaining, uh, and I thought Hull KR played really well. And I thought Hull KR deserved the win, and, it, and it's just inconsistency that right, they, okay. they struggle with. The, some some games they really turn up. Like, like the opening round, I know it seems a long time ago now, but against all FC, they turned up and they had a good dig, yeah, they snatched the win. Uh, they just can't put an 80 minute performance together because it was leading at half time and then they came out in the second half and were, were just uh, so shoddy in defence. It, yeah, they, they really need to, to shape up in defence unless it could be uh, worrying times for them because they should. Like, with, with all respect to Huddersfield, they shouldn't be getting 40 points put past mm. them by Huddersfield. No. Just two sections remaining, because I, I, I know we're, we are into Wigan time. <laughs> uh, I've just sort of looked and checked the stopwatch here, so we're running just over the hour. Um, I'm going to say, we're, we've been doing this good week, bad week, which yeah. is an easy one. What about your highlights of the week? So just one. Uh, my highlight of the week, or my moment of the week, could probably be probably Daryl Powell coming onto the pitch for Castleford when they were coming back for kickoff. It's something that something that I've not, I, I don't think, I can't recall ever seeing that before. I know. Once when I was at a Warrington game, I've seen Tony Smith pulling the players over to the side of the pitch to give them a telling off, but I've, n- I've never seen a manager walk across and the look in his eye, he was absolutely furious. The, the look that he gave his wing was just, oh, he looked like he looks good. Yeah. And, yeah. and the shepherd's crook came out later off for Eden, didn't he? He did, but then you, he, Eden, Eden got the brunt of that. You could, if looks could kill, then it, 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 dead, it, 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 it must be pretty embarrassing when, when you get subbed off if you're a winger. But then, because that, that, that really shows that you're having a shocker, doesn't it? I don't think it was just Eden, though, who, who got a bit of stick. I think when he first came onto the pitch, there was a look that he gave Michael Shenton as if to say, come on, you're meant to be the leader out on that pitch and you're demonstrating absolutely no leadership. And, yeah, that, that that's just something that I've not seen before and it, it didn't have the desired effect. But I, I, I don't know, I think... I think it, whether whether or not Eden plays this week will be, will be interesting when you've got James Clare waiting in the wings and... I wouldn't be surprised if he makes a couple of changes to that starting eleven, uh, starting thirteen. Sorry, uh, my my highlight will just be Saint Helens that Saint Helens performance because <laughs> well Johnny Lomax would box up. Yeah, he's yeah. my highlight of the week because I mean over two hundred meters he ran for which yeah, is incredible. incredible. That's that's an incredible stat. That's more than half of the pack of 
Yeah. Uh, Castleford is really, it all really in it. He's, 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 he's probably the, the best standoff in Super League. At Absolutely. The uh, a sensational player to watch, but they, they've, got, they've got so many good players to watch Saints. Uh, so how good's Peyru going yeah. on at the moment? Well, well, Dump it and Zebte. You can go through every member of that team and you, you could just. The, the back line That's of Coots, Grace, yeah. Makinson, Percival, and uh, Nagama. It looks unbeatable, doesn't it, at the moment? I mean, I know nothing's won at this point. Has, has there been a better front row in the, in the Super League era than Wormsley and Thompson as well? Mm, it's an interesting it's, one. It's up for debate, but certainly, it's, it'd certainly be up there in, yeah. in, the, in the front row competitions. And talking on that on that Saints performance, I think that. It, it, it was it was that good I'd even say that the scoreline flattered Castleford because you think about their two tries one of them came at full time that that jinking run from Truman which was very good and the other one the Shenton length of the field yeah. interception was offside so yeah, it was offside by about five minutes exactly yeah, it was, it was it. well offside so that you think about that that that's given Casper a little bit of credibility but I don't think Saints I think Saints deserve all the plaudits because they were absolutely phenomenal. I fear, I fear, I fear for the Rhinos this week because I think uh, the Tigers might be able to <laughs> might be able to to get some revenge. And... I'm glad you've mentioned that, Drew, because yeah, that moves us nicely onto the fixtures we've got coming up. So it starts tonight. Leeds Come Rhinos on. against Castleford. I'm guessing that you're tipping Cass. Definitely Cass tonight. Any Cass. hope for Leeds? Any hope for Leeds? Uh, I think it'll be. I think it'll be close, but I, I do think Castleford off off the back of such a humiliating. Defeat last week, I think Daryl Powell will be adamant that his team, yeah. his team bounce back, and I can't see anything other than a cat's win, and that that's only going to mount the pressure on David Ferner. Uh, on Friday in the Betfred Super League, it's Hull FC against Warrington. Where do your thoughts lie on that one, gentlemen? I'll go for Warrington. I think they'll just be too strong for Hull. Yeah, I'd say Warrington. I think Hull have got a few too many injuries at the minute. Uh, St Helens against Hull Kingston Rovers. <laughs> if they don't do something about these missed tackles that we've talked about. This could be the biggest score in Super League yeah. get the season come I, yeah. I, I think if, if Hulk and I don't improve their game and Saints are firing on all of a sudden, I could see this being a 60 or a 70. Be, being honest, I think it could be could be a very big score. <laughs> I, don't know what, I don't know what 70 point score means against Saints, mm. uh, <laughs> uh, I am not going to mention anything. I'm not going to take you back to that time. You've already I've, just done that. I have already mentioned it for you. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, Saints Allens uh, by. Uh, a very big score. Uh, I'm, I'll be at the uh, Totally Wicked Stadium to cover the game for the Rugby League dot com on Friday. So make sure you check my report uh, if you you want to read one of Saints' ten tries. Then I can't <laughs> believe it. We've got three Sunday games as well. London Broncos against Huddersfield Giants. That's a ding dong battle down in the capital, isn't it? I'm, I'm pretty London for this. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I fancy London. Yeah. All three of us going that way. They, they don't want to play on that artificial turf. It's their own ground, obviously. I know it's only London, but of it, it, it's only what four hour drive, five hour drive, depending where you go from. Um, but I think the the travel time and and the staying over it kind of affects teams when they go down there. Um, so I'll, I'll go London on that. Is that your excuse for winning losing there a couple of weeks ago? <laughs> Don't want to bring that up again, Drew. Uh, right, Wakefield against Salford. Uh, I, I, I I I got Salford. I think Salford will Salford will get the win. I think they're. Their half bats have been really good this year. Obviously, Wakefield's have as well. I think that'll be one of the closer ones in the round. But I do think that Salford will just edge it. No, I'll go Wakey. I'm oh. agreeing with you. Yeah, I'll, I'll go Wakey. Do you think? He, I think it's going to be a really, really close game. Though. It'll, it'll be one in the forwards, I think. Uh, Wakey by eight. Something like that. It depends which Wakefield turns up. Is it going to be the Wakefield that got obliterated by Warrington in the first half, or the Wakefield that produced a that obliterated Warrington in the yeah, second half? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah, Wakey have been a little bit inconsistent as well, haven't they? So far this season. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, it's it'd be a, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll go Wakey. I'll go Wakey. He never changed his yeah, mind. I did. I'll uh, go Wakey. And then, Drew, I'm sure. Are you are you going to this one as well? We're going against Catalan. I am. I am uh, Look, the, the punishment, uh, mate. The, the return of uh, Sam Tompkins uh, at the DW Stadium. It'll certainly be weird seeing uh, Sam Tompkins play against Wigan. What do you think the reaction um, will be to him? Do you think it'll be cheers? Yeah, players? yeah. I think, no, I think, I, think, I think he'll get a lot of cheers. Do you think uh, we'll have some closure on this whole Sean Edwards situation by then? Or is this just going to rumble <laughs> on? Because that, that's, it that's, is that, something that's sort of hovering yeah, over Wigan at the minute. That, that was my bad, week, bad point this whole past seven days. Well, past two weeks or whatever it's been now. And they stole Sean Edwards' shambles. It's a joke. It's a It's a joke. It's making um, Wigan look amateur. It's making Wigan look amateur. It's embarrassing for rugby league. 
Uh, Sean Edwards, he's, he's, say, um, he's not saying any more on the matter, but then he'll do like another five interviews. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a complete and utter farce. If, if Sean Edwards wants to go to England Rugby Union, uh, in my opinion, let him do it. Just let him, but, but don't say, oh, just, just have a think about it and, and just look, get back to us and let us know and then we'll put something out. It, it's a shambles. And I, I don't see how... In, in any professional sport, if you agree to if you agree to become coach with someone, it need, you can't just shake hands on it. <laughs> Everything in sport nowadays has got to be a contract. Yeah. Everything, and I don't. How there wasn't a contract for Sean Edwards, a club legend, a rugby, the thing is that who's rugby one of the top coaches in rugby union, not to sign a not the to press release to sign said signed as well. Though, yeah. isn't it? The press release yeah. said signed. So but, yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but that got through? Yeah, but Wiggins. Um, <coughs> announcement on John Bateman going to Canberra said he'd agree he, uh, he, he, he'll come back to Wigan after his time in the NRL and then John Bateman's to, uh, told me, um, Phil Wilkinson at the Wigan Post that I've not signed anything, anything with Wigan I, I said I'd like to come back if, if I do come if I decide to come back to Super League but John Bateman could be in the NRL for the next Ten eight years, years. yeah yeah but, but in the end of his career he could finish his career in the NRL he's good enough to do but in the, in the announcement, we're going to make it a rod for the wrong back, aren't they? Yeah, um, yeah definitely. In, in a way, because if it... I don't know, it, it's, 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 it's actually annoying me now because it's it's just a, a, a shambles. It's a, a complete farce and it just... It, it's embarrassing for Wigan, but it's like it's just a, it's taking the make out of rugby league as well. well Final think, word on this, James. Yeah, I think that's why that's why the Wigan statements have been so brief. I think it is, as you said, that embarrassment, and I think I think the people at the club will hang their heads in shame the fact that they didn't get that deal signed, and I think it's just making them look amateur in a professional sport. Yeah, well, hopefully, it'll be a, it'll be a lesson for all rugby league clubs to to get things done properly. Uh, One of these happens every year, though, so it's but it's just amazing that it's happened at Wigan. Right, I'm going to move us on because just the last few fixtures of this week, just yep, to yep, tell everyone yep. about. Uh, Saturday sees the return of the Coral Challenge Cup. It's round four. We've got Featherstone Rovers against Swinton. I can only see a Featherstone winner. Fe- Featherstone. Featherstone winner. Yeah. Uh, but we have a televised match on the Our League. Is that the Crusaders derby? The Crusaders against the Crusaders. That's oh. all Heath against North Wales this won't be a walk in the park for North Wales I'll go, I'll go for North Wales but if there is any shock or surprise in the Challenge Cup this weekend I think it'll be the Crusaders Derby. I think they've got some super players that's all Heath yeah I think they're, they're a good team I, I, I'd i go against I think, I think that'll be the shock of the round I think that's how Heath will progress but I will go for North Wales by six I think we'll just edge it mm. Uh, on Sunday, there's a whole heap of fixtures in the Challenge Cup. Barrow against York. Barrow, a form advantage. I go Ooh, York. York. I go York. They, they've, they've surprised me this season, actually, how, how well they've started. They've, got, they've always had a good team, haven't they? But I, I didn't expect them to start this well. Mm. Batley against Lot Lane. Batley. I think, I think Will Edge it. I think Lot Lane have had a good run. And I think it'll be a close game, but I do think Batley yeah. has just got too much. The Jewel win as well, aren't they, Batley? Yeah. Uh, Dewsbury against West Hull. Now West Hull are a really decent amateur side. They've done so well getting players through from the under 18s to the top team. Yeah, I'll go with Dewsbury though. Yeah, I, I'll agree. I, 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 think, I think they'll just be too strong and, and too fit for, for West Hull. It will be interesting though because they won't be able to play, or you'd think they won't be able to play any of the loan signings that they've got because they've got mm. a few few guys on loan there at the moment. Yeah, they've got, got, they got uh, Callumfield and Sammy Kabula from... Wigan, uh, they've got a few from Huddersfield. And well, I think they'll, they'll still have enough, I think, to, to get over the line. Does uh, Mustafa move his? Yeah. From, yeah. And uh, Oliver Trout from Leeds. Well, you yeah. think, I can't understand. He's, he's a quality young player, Trout. Oh, uh, not both of those yeah. quality players, yeah, yeah, aren't they, yeah. really? Yeah, but okay. Uh, Featherstone Lions against Doncaster. Um, I'm intrigued where that one's going to be played because there's nothing that suggests it's not at Featherstone Lions, but you'd half expect it to be over at. The old new nutrition stadium. You would, yeah. yeah. I was <laughs> going to say Paul Stoppage Road. Those uh, <laughs> old folkies. Um, Donny. I'd like to go with Donny. Yeah, okay. I can't go past that. Uh, Huddersfoot against Halifax. I'd say Huddersfoot. Oh, Hunter. this could be interesting, eh? It'll be, it'll be, it'll be tough on the fact that Huddersfoot have been on such a good run. Halifax off the back of a relative drubbing by Toronto. They'll be down on the luck. 
Huntley will be riding high and is it Huntley do they have home advantage you do yes yeah, so, yeah I, I think Huntley could could not know no, I'll, go, I'll go with Halifax they've got to bounce back some stairs haven't they uh, Keithley against Bradford and Mary with water yeah. and tie. It's on your BBC uh, online on the weekend. Yeah. On Sunday. A nice derby. I can only see one winner though, and that's the Bulls. Yeah, agreed. Come on, the Cougars. <laughs> be, a, be a good atmosphere at Cougar Park, though, wouldn't it? Mm. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be a cracking atmosphere. Hopefully, it'll they'll be get a good, good moneymaker for, for the club as well. Yeah. Um, Hopefully, they can get the crowds in through the doors for what should be a really good game. You'd expect there to be a good crowd as well over at Staley Bridge for Oldham against Widnes. You know, if they're taking a thousand to, to or eleven hundred to Rochdale, you'd expect a similar sort of number turning up there. And I remember going to Staley Bridge a few years ago when um, I think it was Warrington were in town, and there was about two and a half thousand, and the ground was bouncing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll, be, it'll be good. I think. I think witness will witness will run all over them in that one. I think the the, the confidence they've got at the minute. I think that that could be a big scoreline. I think witness will progress. I'll, this, I'll go with witness as well. This is my Sunday afternoon sorted. A trip to the Olympic Legacy Park for me to see Sheffield Eagles taking on Lee Centurions. Ooh, that'll be a tough one. Very tough because Sheffield have have been brilliant so far. Um, I think if Lee get it right, they can still take. Sheffield, but it's Sheffield have the mockers on Lee when it comes to knockout rugby as well. It'd be, it'd be a tough one because both both teams are really good. The, there's, there's not a lot that you could pick between them. I, I don't think. I don't. I don't believe it'd have any of the St. Helens boys, would they? Because it's Charles Cole. Yeah, that's probably the only. I I think Sheffield will win purely because of the fact that so Lee might so, the numbers. So Lee Lee won't have Richardson and Douglas, would would they? Uh, my heart is saying Lee. Being the way that I am, well, I'm going Sheffield. My head is probably saying Sheffield, but I'm going to, because you two have said Sheffield already. <laughs> I'm going with the <laughs> South Africa. There we go. <laughs> uh, we've got Whitehaven against Rochdale Hornets. Carl Foster returned to his previous club. I, I've got to go with Whitehaven. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I go Whitehaven as well. I mean, Whitehaven's won three of the first four fixtures in the league, so you know they're in a, a, a just, better run just of form. Home patch. Yeah. Be white here, Rochdale without the without the Warrington boys, and we've already mentioned Workington Town against Newcastle Thunder. But do you think Dennis Betts will have all the say this week? And will the Thunder reverse that result? Oh, this, mm. I, oh. it depends how much it depends how much input Dennis Betts is having on the Thunder because I've we, we spoke before about the interim yeah. interim coach. How much I'd imagine someone like him will want to have a big say. I think. I, I I think Newcastle will win. But I'll go, I'll go with Workington then. Oh, got a few few differences of opinion yeah. today. I'll, I'll go I'll go with Leon Price. See, he's got the bragging rights next week. I'll go with Leon again. I think so. I, mean, I can't believe we've agreed so many times. I've, 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 have we gone with the different uh, prediction apart from the Lee Sheffield game? Don't think so. Great minds think alike and all that. There you go. Hang on, you can't compare my. Ah. <laughs> That's not great. <laughs> That's an insult. <laughs> I do, of course, Jess. Uh, <laughs> thanks again, Drew. Thanks again, James. Thank Great you. to have you with us again. You've been watching Love Rugby League Weekly in association with Betfred, and we'll join you again next week.